All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, we'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Mashiach, Gomalak, Yahushai. That is to say, Yahweh, being named the Heavenly Father, who the world will call God, and Yahweh Shai, being named his only begotten Son, who the world will call Jesus Christ. All right, it's Brother Kasadia from W. Five Jersey, Philly. Right, we want to touch on today, man. Right, it's a little, uh, a deep breakdown, right, exactly on what Job 22 and 6 is talking to. Um, it's like what Psalm 22, 22 and 6 is talking about. Um, and even Job 25 and 6, right? Yahweh Shai being that worm that is uh, being referred to and its significance of what that actual worm is all about, right? So we're going to get to the, uh, the verse. Let's go to the book of, um, let's start with Psalm chapter 22 and verse 6, right? Psalm chapter 22, verse 6. Now, now, really quick, before we get this precept, let's go to Psalm chapter uh, 78. And we're going to go to verse uh, 2. Right? Psalm 78 and verse 2. Right? And David reads, David says, he says, um, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Right? So David, when he's writing this psalm and writing all these uh, psalms the Lord has uh, had him uh, put the spirit on him to, uh, to create, all these psalms are so-called dark sands or parables so these things aren't you know exactly what meets the eye sometimes sometimes these things are twofold maybe even threefold right the lord told you um let me get that preset real quick and that's job chapter 11 verse 6 right job 11 and 6 and that he will show thee the secrets of wisdom that they are double to that which is know therefore that yahweh is active of, of thee less than our iniquity deserve so we wanted the first portion of that precept which is to say that the secrets of wisdom are sometimes double to that which is, right? Sometimes, again, these things, you know, they, you kind of, you got to go into this thing, man. Sometimes you might have to go to the Hebrew. Sometimes you might have to go to, you know, pull them 17 precepts, uh, uh, 84 precepts, right? 100 precepts just to get the, you know, the breakdown of a thing, man, right? And that's, you know, the Lord said a wise man, right? He's going to delight himself in these things, man. Let me get that precept. Let's go to the book of um, Sirach, right? Bear with me. Sirach chapter 39, and we're going to go to verse 2. I'll start at verse 1 for the sake of it. Sirach 39 and verse, well, I'm going to get right to it. Verse 2, it says, He will keep the sayings of the renowned men, and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. So a wise man, he's going to meditate his heart upon wisdom understanding get into the prophecies get into the ancients get into the deep dark parables that's a wise man he's going to do those things he's going to kind of go behind the scenes and try to really see how this thing really worked man if you got ears to hear so when we go to uh, psalm 22 and 6 it might appear as if david is just talking about himself but he's really not he's writing a parable of the his so-called father if you got ears to hear giving that yahweh shy is the uh, is the creator of all men, right? Through the Most High God. Nevertheless, he's also the son of David as well. And they tell you that in the book of uh, Revelation, the twenty second chapter. But let's get that he's the root and offspring of David. But this is Psalm twenty two and six, right? We're gonna start here, Psalm chapter twenty two and verse six, and it reads, "But I am a worm, and no man ever approach a men and despise of the people." Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read down a little bit and then we're going to come back up. Right. We're going to come back up. We're going to touch on exactly what this worm is talking about. So we're going to read on. Psalm 22 and 6. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. And they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying he trusted on Yahweh that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him. So this is not talking about David. This is not just, you know, just plain talking about David. On one fold, yeah, you could say so. All the heathen kind of, you know, mocking David, even the children of Israel and today saying that we trust on the Lord, but the Lord is not even there to come save us. When I mean, David had all the enemies and time after time again, he had to go, you know, against nation after nation, slaughter this king, slaughter that king. David had a lot of enemies against him. Even his own damn son, man, right, kind of turned against him. But nevertheless, 
A, David remained in, uh, faithful and trusting in the Lord and put his trust and confidence in the Most High God. But what this is really going into is Yahweh Shai. Where Yahweh Shai is that so-called worm in this parable. And what this is talking about is the context of him being delivered up to the Romans, who's now parting his garments and kind of, you know, getting on him, saying, you know, he trusted in the Lord, but he's not, the Lord not here to save him. If he's a son of man, and get himself down off this cross. Right? We're going to read on. We're going to come back to it. Verse 9. It says, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me. Uh, Saki. Had beset me around, they gaped upon me with their mouths as a raven and a roaring lion. I'm gonna read on a little bit more. I'm actually jump down to um. I'm gonna jump down to sixteen. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They cast my garments among them and cast lots. Upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Yahweh, O my strength, haste thee to help me, deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Right? So now we're going to hop into it, man. What is this really going into? Right? Now we already told you through the spirit that um Psalm 22 and 6. That it says, but I am a worm and no man ever approach a man and despise of the people. This is this worm is not a literal worm. It's not talking about it's a worm that kind of sit on your wind, your, you know, your, your windshield. It kind of hopped on your windshield or that worm you use for bait so you can kind of cast a fishing rod in the sea and kind of get some fish. This is not the worm the Lord is talking about. It's not talking about the damn worm on SpongeBob that um, who the hell, who the hell is that? One of them damn uh, creatures in SpongeBob kind of use as a damn pet. That's not what the, that's not what the Lord's talking about. It says, "But I am a worm and no man." Right? When you actually go into it, you actually got to go into the you know the blue letter on certain things, man. You go into the Hebrew, you go into the etymology, the Greek. You got to get into it, man. As scholars, right? Uh, you know, trying to study our own scriptures, we got to go into this thing, man. You can't kind of leave it at face value, Salakia. You can't leave it at face value. So when we go into Psalm 22 and 6 in the Greek, or it's like in the Hebrew, right? Let's pull it up. This word worm, I'm going to pull it up real quick. Strong's H8438. Tola. Tola. Right. And second entry. Tolea. Okay. Tolea. And third entry. All right, all right. That's it on that. So, Tola. Which means worm, scarlet stuff, crimson. It says worm, the female caucus alysis. It says scarlet stuff, crimson, scarlet, the dye made from the dried body of the worm of the female caucus alysis. So we're going to kind of get up in this caucus alysis, man. We're going to kind of uh, get the breakdown on what, the, what exactly is going into. Now it says... When a female of the scarlet worm species was ready to give birth to her young, she would attach her body to the trunk of a tree, fixing herself so firmly and permanently that she would never leave again. Right. So this female caucus alysis is actually known as the Messiah worm, man. That's what historians have kind of called it. Right. And, and, and never mind the title of this um, article. Or it's like yeah, the, um, the damn website. It's, you know, don't mind that. But nevertheless, let's get into this article. So it says Messiah the Worm. Now, believe it or not, this caucus alysis is chiefly found in Israel. All right. This worm known as a caucus alysis is chiefly found in Israel. Now, again, we went into the, we kind of clicked on it. You know, it says, again, Psalm 22 and 6. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. So this is not a literal worm, but what it's going into is this man who will be in his similitude of a worm and chiefly 
not just any worm, but the female caucus elicis, we got to break down with the female caucus elicis, what it actually, you know, what's, what's the uh, significance of it. So it says, the Israeli common oak, also called, called the Palestine oak, or officially, you know, that pronunciation right there, you can kind of read it, is a variety of the Kerm or Kermes oak, right? Kermes oak. It says it is a low growing shroom like tree or it's like a shrub like tree. It says on these particular trees are often found an insect that was called in earlier times Caucus Alyssus in a Latin and by the modern name of the Kermes vermilio. The destination of vermilio is telling us it's telling us that this little guy is a worm, right? So we're going to go on. It says, although small and seemingly insignificant, because you're probably thinking, what the hell are you making a breakdown about a worm for, brother? You kind of ran out of topics. Nah, brother, listen, you got to go into this thing, right? And it's going to get deep. It says, although small and seemingly insignificant and not particularly looking much like a worm, this little insect was a key source in ancient times for the precious dye color called crimson. Now, if you look at that cup, you know, that, that crimson, we know crimson, it, it looks like blood, right? It looks like blood. It looks like grapes, the wine of the grapes, right? Reading on, though, it says this little insect was a key source. Well, we actually, we skipped that. We read it already. It says, in fact, the word crimson itself comes from the word kermes and can be traced back to the uh, Arabic all kermes, crimson, which likely originated from the ancient Sanskrit word uh, kermaja, meaning worm made, right? Reading on. It says the dye that is extracted from the bodies of these insects is closely related to carmine, another red dye sometimes used in foods as a coloring agent. In fact, it was only until the relatively recent discovery of the New World, which is this, you know, Western Hemisphere, New World source of carmine that crimson from the Carmes vermilio was the primary source for red dye in the world. So we gonna kind of skip ahead a little bit. Let's get into the significance of this. Right, this paragraph right here. Right, this paragraph right here. It says an in interesting aspect of this creature is what it goes through in order to birth its young. All right, so things kind of going to get interesting. It says while the insects are born with legs, the females eventually lose the use of their legs, which is apparently why they were given the destination of a worm. Shortly thereafter, the following amazing events happen. When a female of the scarlet color, like it, yeah, let me read it again. When a female of the scarlet worm species was ready to give birth to her young, she would attach her body to the trunk of a tree, fixing herself so firmly and permanently that she would never leave again. The eggs deposited beneath her body were thus protected until the larvae were hatched and able to enter their own life cycle. So this worm, it gets on the tree and, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it can't use its legs. It can't kind of, you know, jump down. It can't do that. Now it's a so-called worm on the tree. Then the only way for her young or the offspring, right, and with really chiefly the eggs, um, to give life and, uh, you know, have their own life, hey, this, this worm has to die. It says, as the mother died, the crimson fluid stained her body in the surrounding wood. From the dead bodies of such female scarlet worms, the commercial um, scarlet dyes of antiquity were extracted. So again, the only way for the eggs to have life, for those young to have life is by the mother having to, you know, attach herself to the tree and die. And for a, a blood-like color to, you know, you know, to uh, fill the tree. Now, on a spiritual level, we know that Yahweh Shai, when she was crucified, on a cross made of tree, the only way for us to come in and enter into life is by him being on that cross and dying. That's the only way for Israel to ever have life. Else we'll continue to go to hell off and eventually we'll meet our own destruction. Because the law was going to make us perfect. Just keeping the law solely. We need an intercessor, a propitiation between the Most High God and Israel, right? 
to to or you can even say a um an intercessor, right? A mediator, if you will, to allow Israel to have life. And again, the only way for that to happen or have happened was for Yahweh Shah to be on that cross and dying, right, for the sins of the nation of Israel, so that we can now through his blood be redeemed again. So we're gonna read on. It says, although the insect does not look uh, much like a worm in a modern usage in the term, it is how the, the insect has been um, referenced in writings for a very long time. The above information is significant to us as believers because surprisingly the very insect is spoken of in the scriptures themselves. There the worm is called in the Hebrew, tola. We just went through that. The term basically means devourer or yeah, devourer in respect to the appetite of the insect or insect which feeds on a sap of a tree this worm was a key source for the dye and we kind of touched on that already right so let's touch back on let's go back to the scriptures now now that we got the understanding of that let's go back to the scriptures and let's continue to break this thing down all right so back to psalm 22 and 6 but i am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despise of the people now let's go quickly let's get a precept Let's go to Job 25 and 6, right? Job 25 and 6. And it reads, How much less man that is a worm, and a son of man which is a worm. So a worm is referred to as, you know, this is just saying that man is very low in this thing, right? The Most High God, he has dominion over the whole earth. Man can't say, you know, I'm, I'm now justified. I can justify myself. I could be on the same accord with the Lord. We can't do that, man. Because we just, we just damn dust and ashes. Even damn worms and, and ants and insects that grow in the damn, that's, that crawl in the damn ground, man. But it says again, and the son of man, which is a worm. Now, Yahweh Shai, he came being a servant for the nation of Israel. He said, it says in the book of Mark chapter 10 and verse 42 on down, that he didn't come uh, having those minister to him, but come minister and, and paraphrase it being a servant for Israel. That's how you got to be. Yahweh Shai come in as a, the Lord said, a meek shall inherit the earth. So this is the things that, you know, as a worm, you have to be lowly. Nevertheless, we know that worm, we just went into it. It's actually the same definition. Let me pull it up for you. Same definition, right? As what we just touched on. So that's Joel 20, 25 and 6. That same worm is going into the caucus of Lysus. So it says that the son of man, which you know is Yahweh Shai, he's, he's known as the worm. Why is he known as the worm? Let's finish this uh, uh, parable up. Right? Psalm 22 and 6. Right? But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. We know Yahweh Shai was despised of the people. Not only other nation of Israel, but he's despised of all the other nations, man. He was kind of, he was mocked. And we're going we gonna to kind of get into it. He was mocked. He was scorned. Right? He was bruised for our name's sake. Right? For the nation of Israel's sake. So that Israel can now have life. Yahweh had to go through a lot of trials and tribulation, affliction, so that Israel can now have life. Right? To bring Israel back to the Father. Right? Verse 7. And yet, and, and yet man didn't regard the Lord, man. And man still not regarding the Lord. When the Lord is speaking his words in the highways and byways, men don't, you know, they don't want to hear this thing, man. They want to be a nigga, continue to do what they want to do. They don't want to serve the most high God, nor his son. Verse 7. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake their head, saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. And when did this take place? Let's go to the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter. All right. Matthew chapter 27. And like I, like I mentioned, we're going to go into it. Matthew 27, and we're going to start at verse. So I can bear with me. Matthew 27. And um, it's a lot to go into right here. We're going to start at verse 25. Matthew 27 and 25. Right? And it reads, Then answer all the people. And said, his blood be on us and our children. So Israel is wicked as hell for saying, hey, look, man, crucify our Lord. Right. He actually they said, 
We have no Lord, but we have no king but Caesar. They said we have no king but Caesar, man. We, they said we don't care about Yahweh Shai. Who is Yahweh Shai? He didn't do nothing for us. These damn devils, man. Yeah, I said it. Our own people is devils too. Wicked too. Reading on. It says, then release he uh, Barabbas or Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Yahweh Shai, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahweh Shai in the common hall and gathered unto him the whole, whole band of soldiers, meaning a whole little company. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And it's like, yeah. Come. It says, and when he had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his hand, right hand, and he bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, hell, king of the Jews. So they were scoring, uh, you know, kind of mocking the Lord. It's going to tell you they just spit on the Lord. They smote the Lord. Our Lord, our king, our savior. It says they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. So they was doing whatever they wanted to do to the Lord, man. Right? Because it was that's the lot the Lord had to fulfill. He could have easily kind of destroyed all of them and cast fire down from heaven. He could have easily done that. He could have easily snapped them uh, Pontius Pilate's head off, man. And took his head and kind of rolled it back to the children of Israel. And said, that's your king right there. That's your governor. He could have easily did that. But he didn't do that because it wasn't that time. When the Lord comes down, that's when he's going to get a chance to do what he got to do to punch his pilot and to the wicked um, uh, fathers and sons that's in, and mothers and daughters that said, let his blood be on us and our children because they wicked and they, des they deserve destruction, man. It is what it is. Right? We're not going to cry. We're not going to cry over two thirds being destroyed. That is what it is, man. And Lord willing... Nobody watching this, nor myself, is accounted as that. Right? But uh, Lord willing to be accounted as the elect. Reading on. It says, And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to be to crucify him. So I'm actually, um, this joint kind of get, you know, heavy. I'm going to come back to this, but I want to jump down a little bit. I'm going to jump down to verse 42. It says, I'm going to start at 41, actually. It says, likewise, also the chief priest mocked him, what the scribes and elders said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from his cross and we will believe him. Right? The Lord don't got to prove a damn thing to nobody, man. But nevertheless, this is the things, you know, this is puffed up, man. The chief priests, the scribes, you got certain so-called chief priests and scribes today, puffed up saying they need a chariot to the Lord, puffed up saying, you know, you're not, you're not going to make it unless you're part of our congregation, puffed up saying that, you know, a, a whole 144,000 in my organization. And if you leave my, if you leave, if you leave my camp, right, you're not going to make it. The Lord going to destroy you. But right? we got certain men like that today. But read on. It says he saved others. Himself he can he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in trusted in Yahweh. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. So this verbatim, literally what we just read again in Psalm 22 and verse 8. Right? Psalm 22 and verse 8. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. So this 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 prophecy fulfilled right there, man. Again, this is not David talking about himself. This is a dark saying, a parable, if you will, of Yahweh Shai. He trust verse nine. But thou art he that took him out of the womb. So he took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God, from my mother's belly. I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 16. Verse 16. For dogs have compassed me. And who's those dogs? Those dogs is the heathen. Who's those heathen that compassed Yahweh Shai? Those Romans. 
during the time of Matthew, the 27th chapter, Luke, the 23rd chapter, and the book of uh, St. John, right? The, um, the uh, Shalaki, I believe it's the 20th chapter, right? I don't want to miss, you know, let's get it. Let's get the context. 20th chapter. Shalaki is actually the 19th chapter, right? St. John chapter 19, and we're going to go to verse, because, you know, the same accounts, these are the same accounts right here. St. John chapter 19, and let's... Um, Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 15. St. John chapter 19, verse 15. It says, but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Right? Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified and they took Yahweh Shai and led him away. Who was those that took Yahweh Shai and led him away? The soldiers of Pontius Pilate um, company or army and Roman band. These are the Romans that that our people delivered up Yahweh Shai. And they're going to do the same thing to you, man. They're going to deliver you up to the damn heathen. You know, oh, yeah, we're looking for the so-called black. They're going to say, we're looking for the so-called black Hebrew Israelites. Have you seen them with fringes? And our people going to be like, yeah, we saw them. They're teaching over there. And so and so, we saw him, you know, I, I kind of saw him going to his house. I saw him, you know, at the damn grocery store yesterday. He normally go to this store. They going to deliver you all up, Jake. So you got to be ready for it. You got to have your loins girded. And you got to know that all hell about to break loose in this earth. These things are prophesied. If it happened to our Lord, it got to happen to us. So read on. It says, well, you know, that's, that's really it on that. All right. Let's go back to the book of Psalms. Right, so on 22, and um, I believe it was at 16. For dogs have can pass me. The assembly of the wicked have closed enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. So these dogs, also known as the assembly of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Esau. Right? We know that's we know that's the wicked, man. And the Lord got judgment for these damn devils, too, man. Right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs real quick. Proverbs chapter 3, and we'll go to verse 33. So these devils, they, they're not going to get away from this, right? You're not going to just crucify the Lord, smoke on the Lord, spit on the Lord, and think you're going to get away with this. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 33. The curse of Yahweh is in the house of the wicked. So the Lord said he got a curse for these devils, man. And that curse is to be marked for destruction. The Lord's going to put all these devils to death, Right? You're not going to just, again, you're not going to get away with this. There's nothing to get away, away from, man. The Lord not dealing with these bloody men. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all the workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Yahweh will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. So the Lord is going to utterly destroy the bloody and deceitful man, the wicked. The Lord is going to utterly consume them. Let's go to Sirach chapter 16 and verse 9. Right? So this is the destruction that's written for the devils that did that to our Lord. It's like I want Sirach chapter 16 and 6. This is Sirach 16 and 6. In the congregation of the ungodly shall a fire be kindled, and in a rebellious nation, wrath is set on fire. So the Lord said he's going to kind of grab them all up and burn all their asses up, man. That's the destruction that's coming for them. Our fire is going to be kindled. And that nation is going to be set on fire with the wrath of Yahweh by Shimei Shah. So, of course, they're not going to get away with this. Now, it says that they, you know, back in Psalm 22 and uh, 16, that they pierced Yahweh Shai in his hands and in his feet. Let's go to the book of um, Matthew chapter 27. And we're going to go to... Uh, Bear with me. I won't get the exact account. Matthew chapter 27. And in, um, in verse 35. Come on. Matthew chapter 27 verse 35. It says, And they crucified him and parted his garments cast in lots that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them 
and upon my vesture, vesture did they cast lots. Now, who is it saying that? It says that um that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet. That prophet is talking about is uh King David, and we're gonna get that account. It's later on in uh, Psalm in the twenty second chapter. But nevertheless, when you crucify someone, you are you gotta put you gotta nail them to the cross. Now Yahweh Shah was crucified. This is a Roman custom, right? Let's go to uh, let's pull it up real quick, right? Let's pull up crucifixion. Right, as you know, right, to be crucified, and, and this is not the Lord. We're just gonna put that out there. But we're gonna use it for sake of um, you know, for sake of it. So when it says, right, that's what it's talking about as far as my hands and my feet. Now again, this is not that's not the Lord. Right? This the Lord is not dealing with that. I don't wow. 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 Okay. All right. That's the Lord. Is that the Lord? Damn, feet all broke. Is that the Lord right there? Come on, man. Come on, man. What? That's not that's not what's going on here. All right, but nevertheless, let's get back to it. Let's go back to Psalm 22. All right, Psalm the 22nd chapter. All right, in verse 16, it says, For dogs have get past me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So we just read that. That's in the book of Matthew, the uh, 27th chapter. Now, these things are literally been fulfilled during the time when Yahweh Shah is being led away. Right? Being crucified for your own, for your sake. So you can have life. Just like how that worm, it has to be attached to the uh, tree so that it's young can have life. And Yahweh Shah was attached to that cross so that you can have life. When that scarlet color fills that worm after, his di after it dies... And that same uh, scarlet color, which is the blood of the Lord, is covering all those that's going to be, you know, brought into everlasting life. And all those who the blood is not sprinkled upon for the nation of Israel, hey, that's those that are going to be destroyed. I'm going to read on, though. It says, but be thou far from me, O Yahweh, O my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword. And who's the sword of the Lord? Let's go to Psalm chapter 17. Psalm 17 and verse 13. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him. And it's like you cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the wicked, which is Esau, he's the sword of the Lord. Remember his blessing in the book of Genesis, right? The 27th chapter and 39th verse is to have a sword. That's his blessing. And the Lord uses him to go in, go to war with different nations and ultimately also to have um, have Israel under, you know, bondage until the time of the Lord returns. They crucified the Lord right under the Roman Empire. The Lord is going to return against the Roman Empire. Let's get that precept. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Right. Chapter one and verse seven. Revelation chapter one, verse seven. Behold, he come up with clouds, right? When the Lord returns, he's not going to come down on a damn uh, a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Or come down, you know, in a damn uh, 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 a yacht, in a damn helicopter, right? And he kind of come down, he kind of throw a damn rope down from the third heaven, and he kind of slide down a rope. The Lord not dealing with that. He's not doing that. That's not what's going to be set up. When the Lord returns, he's going to come back in a chariot. It says, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Who is those that pierced him? We just read it's the Romans. They're the ones that pierced the Lord. They're going to be the ones back on this earth when the time of the Lord, when the Lord returns. And that's very soon. So them Romans, Pontius Pilate, 
And those damn devils, they're back here on this earth as well. It says, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so I'm in. Right? So that's going to take place. Right? That's written. That's prophecy. Back to Psalm chapter 22. So we're going to finish this out. Psalm 22 and 20. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. And Esau is also known as that dog. Right? It told you that in the book of... um. Hey, Job said he wouldn't even set his children amongst them. It's like, yeah, he wouldn't even set his... Oh, let me get that preset. I don't want to misquote it. This is... um. Yeah, this is Job chapter 30 and verse 1. It's like, yeah, I misquoted that anyway. But I'm going to read it properly. Job 30 and 1. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. He said, look, I wouldn't even set my ch my damn dogs with them, man. Why? Because they children of fools, they children of base men. All right? They are counted to me as dogs. The Lord said, let's go to Revelation, the 22nd chapter. So these are dogs, man. It's like, yeah. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22 and um 15. Right, Revelation 22 and 15. For without are dogs. So the Lord said, those that don't make it to the gates, they're known as dogs. And sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And who does any of those things more than a so-called white man? Right? He is a damn dog. He's a sorcerer. He conjured up demons on the left hand side. Well, just demons. Right? No left hand demons, just demons. Right? He's a whoremonger. It tell you that in the book of um Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the 16th verse. Right? There's no more profane person as Esau. It says he, he's a murderer too. He's the first murderer of the scriptures. Right? He murder, murdered his brother Abel, which through the spirit is Israel. And Cain through the spirit is Esau. And he's an idolater. He puts any, he don't serve the most high God. It tell you that in the book of Job, the 21st chapter, in the 15th verse, who is the most high God that we should serve him. That's how they get down, man. Tell you that in the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, second chapter, that they said, our portion is this life, our voluptuousness, let us kind of live it up. Let us kind of, you know, uh, do as. They say when in Rome, do as. What does that mean? It's saying, do whatever you want to do. That free spirit. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So it's a damn devil, man. That's Esau. That's a dog for you. Right? And he's going to be on his damn uh, stomach just like a dog as well. Now, again, this caucus elicis, and we're going to kind of pull it up for you. This caucus elicis, this worm in Psalm, the 22nd chapter, in the 6th verse, right? That's the Lord, man. That's the Lord for you. And the Lord had to, you know, shed his blood so that we can have life. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, right? The book of Hebrews, chapter, so like, yeah. Hebrews chapter uh, 2, let me look at verse 10. Right, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. I started at 9. But we see Yahweh Shai, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Where Yahweh Shai had to come down through the spirit, right? In this flesh that we all are created of. Right, Yahweh Shai didn't come down and take the likeness of a um of the angels. Then if he would have did that, how, how could he tell us to, you know, overcome a sin, overcome um this corruptible body when he didn't really have that same, you know, same entrance entrance into life? So he didn't he didn't, you know, he didn't kind of come on and, you know, try to do different things. He came even in the same fashion of his brethren. Right? Salakia. Like, yeah. Right, reading on. It says, Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of Yahweh should taste chase death for every man. So the Lord Yahweh Shai had to taste death for every man. It's not talking about every man in the earth. It's talking about every Israelite man. Right? Remember, this is a letter to the Hebrews. If I got a letter talking to you, then I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to people with them in Germany right now. I'm talking to whoever is watching this video. To you. This is given to you. So this letter, which some scholars say, some scholars believe that Luke wrote this, wrote the book of Hebrews. A other scholars think that Paul wrote this. Other scholars think it could have even been uh, uh, Barnabas. 
that wrote this. But nevertheless, it's you know, it's kind of that's here nor there. It's still a word of the Lord, though. Right? We know certain brothers saying it's otherwise. But read on. It says, verse 10, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bring in many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So Yahweh Shai had to be, uh, he had to suffer death so that we can be made perfect, so that we can be brought into everlasting life, so that we can get the glory with the Lord as long as we suffer with the Lord, right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10. All right? So again, just like how that, that worm, it attaches itself so that its offspring can get life. Yahweh Shai did that so we can have life, man. The only way we would have had life is by Yahweh Shai being that uh, mediator so we can be brought into something new, to that new covenant. And Lord willing, right, all the mighty brothers and even sisters that's watching this, if you continue to believe, when the Lord returns and brings us unto the wilderness and brings um, upon us that new covenant and places that in our hearts, and that's how we receive everlasting life. This is Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He had made, it's like he had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. So Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, it was like Yahweh, right? Uh, using Yahweh Shai to be the offering of sin for the nation of Israel. That every time he looks upon Yahweh Shai, he's going to look upon the nation of Israel. and or, or vice versa, every time he looks at Israel, he's thinking upon his son and how he has um, compassion towards his son and allowing his son to be that mediator, the offering of sin for us to have everlasting life now. Right? Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Right? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. And it reads, Hebrews 10 and 19. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Yahweh Shai, by a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Right? So previously there was a veil to separate the holiness from the, ho the holy from the holies. Now, or, or the holy of holies. Now, now that Yahweh Shai, when he gave up the uh, ghost, it's like so-called spirit, right? Or so-called ghost, which is the spirit. In the book of Matthew chapter 27, it said that the veil of the temple was written twine. Meaning now access, you no longer had to go to the priest to make atonement for sins. But now access to the father is only uh, viable through Yahweh Shai. Now you have to go and pray in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, right? For the Lord to even, uh, you know, hear you for real. You can't just pray in the name of Yahweh, just Yahweh, right? The Lord really, you know, there's a mediator. These are these, the things that set up, man. That's the that's the order to the things, right? It's the Most High God, then it's his son, then it's man, then it's, you know, children. It's like man, woman, and children, all right? And this is Matthew 27 and verse 51. I saw that verse, it's like you. Matthew 27 and verse 50. Yahweh Shai, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent and twined from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So, meaning now access, right, is now made, you know, easier. Now that we, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai dying for us, that we didn't have to now offer up a, a, a sin offering, a burnt offering, right? Having to make these atonements year after year as far as um, going to the high priest. Now you do so via the Lord Yahweh Shai. Verse 52. And the graves were open and, the, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And on a spiritual level, this is happening now. When Yahweh Shai, you know, had to give up the spirit, now this is allowing many saints of Yahshua to now not only you know, be dead in the world and even in the ground, but to be resurrected and be brought back and regenerated and restored back to the Lord. This is happening right now before our eyes. And even much more when the Lord comes back on this earth. There's going to be physical bodies being taken from the ground, like this account is talking about, right? But this is twofold, physical and spiritual. But nevertheless, the, when Yahweh Shai returns, there's going to be physical bodies coming up out the ground, 
out the graves, right, and coming back into um, receiving that crown of life. Verse 53, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Right? So let's go back to um, let's get another precept on this. Let's go to the book of Romans, the third chapter, in the 25th verse. Romans 3 and 25. 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Hamashiach Yahushai, whom Yahweh has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of Yahweh. Right, so now through Yahweh Shai, having believing in the Lord, we now are uh, able to be brought into righteousness through his blood. Right? Through his blood, through his blood being shed for us, through his blood uh, covering that cross, and ultimately covering us through the Spirit. All right? Now you was a, a nigga, and you can come back and be an Israelite. Now you was a harlot, and sh damn shaking your damn, you know, for damn uh, a few damn ones here and there, every night going up in that that damn back room and doing who knows what, right? Just for a damn a few dollars, but it eating my face on it. Yeah, you was dead, but then the Lord called you back into this thing. Now you was on that damn block, always damn, always about murder, always ready to kill your brother. And then the Lord kind of then put them hollow tusks back and told you, you know, put that, throw that damn Glock 9 away and kind of come back in this thing. Right? Come back to the Lord, man. Right? So now we come back to the Lord and we have faith in the Lord and Yahweh Hashem Shai, and then we keep in his commandments and then we can have everlasting life. So yeah, sometimes you got to go into these dark parables, man. And this is a mighty one through the spirit, man. Right? I would be, um, it, it, it had to behoove me if I would have made this breakdown through the spirit, man. Right? To enlighten Israel on the different things. The Lord said you got to observe, you know, you got to kind of observe the different animals. Right? Observe the, uh, the Lord's creation. How the Lord has different things set up. Right? You might just think, oh, it's just a damn worm. But it actually has a much deeper meaning. So with that being said. I'm um, a bit of strong shallow one, continue to endure. It's blood moon damn every day of the week so far, man. For the past damn week. Seven days straight for real. So you know what time it is. You know all hell gonna break loose in the earth. Remember why the Lord died for you. Remember that now you have a shot for everlasting life. Remember that you now can re be redeemed. And as long as you continue to believe, hey, Lord willing, you'll make it in with that crown of life. With that, Kwame Asherala, shallow one.